Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's webinar, Chinese Leasing Strategies and Appetites in 2020. I am your host, Andrew Oates, speaking to you from our Marine Money office in Singapore, and today we are delighted to have with us our moderator, Christophoros Bisbikos, partner at Watson Farley and Williams, based in their Hong Kong office, Bill Guo, Executive Director of Shipping at ICBC Leasing, based in their Beijing headquarters, and Yan Zhonglu, Head of Shipping Finance at Shanghai Pudong Development Bank Financial Leasing in Shanghai. You are probably all familiar with ICBC Leasing as a leading leasing firm in China and a subsidiary of the largest financial group in the world, ICBC Bank. Shanghai Pudong Development Bank Financial Leasing is the leasing subsidiary of Shanghai Pudong Development Bank and a relative newcomer to ship leasing. Today's webinar discussion will focus on the sustainability of Chinese leasing as a source of finance for shipping, the evolution of Chinese leasing, and we are excited to hear the views from Chinese lessors on their ideal customers at this juncture. Before I hand over the controls to Christophoros, a couple of ground rules. For those of you who are new to the webinar, you will all be on mute during this webinar to ensure the quality of the audio. And during this webinar, you have a control panel which should pop up on your screen, as you can see here. There are two major actions you can take today. First, first is to ask a question. To do this, you simply need to enter your question in the box at the bottom of the control panel where it says questions. I will receive them, and at the end of the webinar, I will ask the questions on your behalf. The second major action is to collapse the menu by clicking on the little arrow on the top of the control panel. So with that, I will hand over the floor to Christophoros to begin the discussion. Thank you, Andrew. Hello, everybody. Uh, I think uh, ev everyone here would uh, prefer to have this, this discussion in a conference somewhere in the world, but un unfortunately, given the circumstances, we, we have to do this uh, through our laptops and our phones. Uh, but at least we're very fortunate that Marine Money is giving us the opportunity to have this discussion. And we're also fortunate that technology uh, these days uh, gives us the ability to uh, do so. And uh, I mean, the purpose of today's talk um, is to basically uh, try to provide some insight on the current, uh, current trends uh, uh, in, in Chinese leasing. And we're also very fortunate that uh, today we have representatives from both worlds. We have the very experienced side of Chinese leasing, who has been doing leasing since uh, 2008, Bill, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, yes, since 2008. Yes, and then we have uh, the newcomers in the form of, uh, of SPDB financial leasing, who uh, my understanding is that they have a very ambitious plan for growth. Uh, Mr. Yang, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, your company has been doing aviation leasing for some time now, right? Yes, yes. Mm. yes. Okay, so, um, so we, we are very fortunate that we have uh, both sides of the, uh, you know, of the, uh, we, 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 we have the exciting news side and we also have the experience side uh, of Chinese leasing. Now, current trends might sound a, a very mundane type title, but we should all uh, remember, uh, you know, the days we, we live in, it, it's very e exciting times and sometimes not, uh, you know, it, it, I, I mean, it's not uh, very uh, positive, uh, but at least, uh, you know, a few years ago, we were all discussing about the 2020 and what the impact of 2020 would be in terms of the change of regulations. Now we, we have a new uh, challenge uh, in the form of uh, COVID-19. Uh, so it's all very exciting. Uh, the first question that I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Yan, uh, so, sorry, Bill, uh, actually, um, is how do you see the rest of the year evolving for your company and shipping in general? Mm. Well, this is a very tough question. And, uh, you know, it's already May now. So and uh, almost half this year is gone. You know, everything we discussed in the beginning of this year or maybe end of last year, is uh, become not that important anymore because uh, right now it's more worried about the, the virus, how that's being impacted for the shipping industry of this world. And for us, we're still doing what we, we could do at the current stage, you know, the big change. So, you know, right now we already um, be able to come to the office like us and uh, like me today. So we're still doing the regular business and review also to review some potential investment opportunity. And also still keep doing in the you know, shipping finance uh, of course, we are more cautious and, and carefully look at for your 
the balance sheet or also your cash flow because the cash flow is more important. And um, right now, especially today, compared with the before, and because of the, you know nobody knows how much of the cash inbound cash will come in the rest of the month, and uh, you know if the virus will come, keep keep doing that at the current stage. So and um, in short, you know we're still doing the business and the doors still open. Okay. Uh, do you, do you see any turnaround in the rest of the, you know for Q2? Sorry, Q2 is almost finished actually for Q3 and Q4, or or do you think that this year is basically finished? Um, you know, in 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 terms of any potential growth in the shipping market. Wow, that's um, if uh, if you ask me the same question uh, last year, I maybe give you some clear answer. But right now, I'm being traveled outside of China for almost five months, so I don't know rest of rest of the world. Especially in Europe, in the U.S., and uh, in China, you know, everything become a, gradually become a normal. You know, the shipyards still open and the factory, you know, keep going. But you know, China is a uh, you know import for the raw materials, export for the you know, the finished goods. So, and uh, if no and the customer need for the finished goods, then that, there will be significant impact for the shipping, especially for the container business. So, and um, I I don't I don't really have the answer for the quarter three and quarter four. I have to wait for the you know some more good news from the Europe from US uh, also to Australia. Then we can decide how the market in general, uh, because China import lots of raw materials to convert to be uh, finished goods. If no need to export further, then maybe China reduce the importer or so. So it's a very tough question, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have a clear picture at the current stage. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yan, I know that you have done a, a number of uh, shipping deals the past uh, couple of years. What is your view of 2020 in general, uh, you know, both uh, in terms of the shipping industry, but also in terms of the plans of Shanghai Pudong financial leasing? Uh, okay, you know, the, the virus brings big change to the, to the world. Uh, so for the uh, shipping business, uh, it's a uh, very uh, hard, uh, hard times. And I think uh, uh, all of the com uh, shipping companies will continue to lose their, uh, uh, their car cargo volume will continue to uh, shrink. And some companies' revenue uh, will be reduced. Uh, in the, in the uh, worst case, maybe we can see some uh, individual uh, individual companies restructuring or uh, even go back bankruptcy. Uh, for my company, uh, we 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 think this uh, business shipping is a, a periodic business. So uh, there are always ups and downs in the, in, the, in this business. Uh, so we still keep optimistic, and we will find a good or uh, companies, companies, and the ship. Uh, so we we still keep steady. We haven't changed any uh, credit policy. Just uh, be cautious. Okay. Cautious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cautious is the word that I've been hearing the, the past uh, two or three months, all all the time from all sides. But uh, I, so I would like to ask both of you. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure if. Everybody uh, in the audience knows. I'm, I'm pretty sure they do. But uh, Chinese leasing companies are also active in the aviation industry as well. And a lot of people are raising their question: uh, Will the damage in the aviation industry uh, also have an impact on the appetite uh, of Chinese leasing companies doing shipping deals? Bill, Maybe Bill. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, based on our company's regulation, and we can't comment on anything about the aviation leasing at the current stage. And so you can, you can treat us separately. So we're still doing our shipping um, as normal, as we as I already explained. Just like uh, Yan just uh, said about, so just more cautious and more carefully to review the your balance sheets or also review your business at current stage. Um, so and uh, so far, there's no direct impact for us. So we still and uh, based on our you know our planning, our pace, and um, you know, no change at the current stage. Okay, our uh, our shipping business is still uh, uh, in normal now, uh, because the aviation and uh, the shipping is different. Uh, uh, the airplane transport passengers, 
uh, but the shape transport cargo, so uh, different. Uh, for the passenger transportation, maybe it's uh, uh, more vulnerable, but for uh, shipping, it's different. So we still uh, continue to expand our business. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Yang, would you have a preference uh, on a sector that uh, you would uh, begin to finance at this juncture? I mean, is for would, for example, tankers be more appealing for you? Container ships? Which which set sector would you favor at this juncture? Uh, so just for now, you know, for all the sectors, uh, uh, the carousels uh, uh, have been. Uh, affected the most. So yes. now, uh, maybe the way uh, uh, we have done a lot of uh, business with the uh, uh, container ship uh, sector. So it's uh, this year, maybe we will slow down our steps. But for, but for other sectors, uh, we still push push our uh, business. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, some projects of bulk uh, tankers and uh, the LPG career is in the process of credit approval. I see. Bill? Yes, and um, you know, we have a very big portfolio, so and uh, we have to and uh, not focus on specific one segmentation because it's not a healthy uh, for our you know current portfolio, and you know I think right now we have about and uh, um, 16, one six, 16 billion US dollar in the portfolio. So it's, the size is very big. So we have to very carefully to, to and to pick up the right segmentation to do the further investment. If you have to pick up the you know something um, among all this kind of the segmentation, I would say the tanker and the dry dock still and the two sectors as we are still and uh, you know keep on you know the, doing the investment. And the uh, other factors are, you know, the Yen, like I always explain. Um, so we are being, and, uh, you know, we are not just shut down the door, to put it this way. We still, you know, look for some good opportunities, especially some of the high, but good credit customers, and, uh, you know, even for the cruise and the customers, and uh, because they are facing some, you know, cash flow issue, but still, you know, fundamentally, it's still good, it's just, you know, the virus issue. So we are more open mind to try to discuss with them. Of course, in the current stage, and um, you have to more, you have to give us more credit to us and uh, to show, you know, maybe pledge <clears throat> more, you know, more ships and uh, maybe doing something, you know, to change our, you know, the further financing for your for your project. Um, but uh, I would say, and uh, you know, the doors open for all the segmentation at the current stage still. Okay, I, I, I mean, in, in in these difficult times, of course, you mentioned both of you mentioned the word caution, and uh, as I said, mm -hmm. many people, uh, you know. Uh, uh, mentioned that word quite frequently these days, but if I were a solid credit, you know, a good ship owner, and, mm. and I had, you know, a reasonable balance sheet, uh, and I saw an opportunity, uh, because bad times bring uh, opportunities as well, so if I were to find an opportunity to buy a fleet, would mm -hmm. the Chinese community support me? Uh, or do you, do you think that they wouldn't do that in, in these days? Because there are a lot of ambitious people out there who are looking, uh, you know, to uh, find the opportunities. Is Chinese leasing the right tool in this kind of scenario? The shutdowns, yes, you know, especially on Chris yourself, if you want to buy the ships and uh, have the personal guarantee, we're going to finance you to oh, buy oh, the yeah. ships and uh, <laughs> because you are the very solid and uh, the credit. You know, Thank so you. you know, my point is, you know, someone you know have such as you as I already explained, but I'm sorry that the you know the credit the background definitely and um, you know ICBC leasing uh, would be you know willing to do the business with your guys and uh, support your business plan. Uh, we had all the saying in Chinese, you know, only in the low season, you know, the low market, we will see who's the real you know hero or who who will be the real players in the market. So especially right now, the current stage, you have much more and say. Your equity and you know you have reserve more and uh, you know cash and uh, good in the cash flow you know it's maybe the right timing for you to and you know, expand your market and uh, your, your business but you have to be very cautious there also carefully and uh, if so and uh, I speak leasing especially on myself would like to support your business and uh, to work together for your for your planning. 
Thank you, Please. Bill. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, Miss, Mr. Jan, would you be also to uh, able to to support uh, you know any ship owner uh, in any ambitious plan to grow its fleet by acquiring other fleets or distressed assets? Uh, okay, I think uh, the uh, the the credit policy for all the financial institutions may be the same or similar. Uh, for, uh, there are some uh, general rules. Uh, the first one is uh, the performance or the, the final performance or operation from performance of the customers. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, the leasing firms are different from banks. We may pay, uh, pay more attention to the shape. Uh, if the shape, the, the quality shape, the shape of the quality is high, and the price is uh, and uh, is low. Uh, then with, uh, our uh, risk uh, risk exposure will be low, so uh, maybe it's, uh, it's a little different. We will pay more attention to the ship uh, the asset. I mean. mm. Mm. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yan. Um, and okay, so uh, the appetite is there, even uh, with a bit of caution. Uh, so that's positive. Uh, I'm not sure we've been receiving the same messages from the traditional uh, ship financiers, which are, uh, you know, the uh, the, 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 the banks. Um, and my understanding is generally the pricing that the banks offer um, has has gone up recently. Uh, financing is not available to all. Um, Basel uh, four has played, uh, I think, a role in that respect. But certainly the virus has played an even bigger uh, uh, role. Uh, in that regard. So I, so I wanted to ask you, do you see pricing going up in the future or do you see it being stabilized? Uh, how, how do you see pricing uh, uh, you know, uh, being affected by the uh, current situation globally? Uh, Bill, if, um, if, if, if Yes, sure. Um, I don't know what kind of pricing you are, you are talking about because right now everything is goes down, you know, including maybe the new building plan. New building and the pricing, also the second-hand pricing as well, maybe the freight pricing. So, and uh, if you talk about the, if you talk about no. the the near future, uh, sorry, Chris, go ahead. So I'm talking about the financing pricing that you would offer to your customer. Okay, okay. So and uh, for the financing and the to our customers and uh, so far we don't have the big change, but the life has been uh, you know lower. So and uh, we might slightly increase, but I'd say you know keep the same, no big change. Again, we have to look for the customers and the credit themselves. If good customers, we always try to provide a very competitive price to able to even compete with the traditional financial banks. Um, but for other customers, like Ian said, maybe not good credit customers, but you have very good assets, shipping assets, we might have a little higher you know, pricing, uh, but uh, combined with your assets to be pledged. So we offer your, you know, the bounded solution to offer your, you know, the business needs. So that's the, that's kind of a solution current stage. So in general, we keep the same, no big change compared with last year. At the same time, we are doing business with customers. So we just try to deliver the message to them. So no big change so far. No big change. Uh, Mr. Yan, do you think that the current situation has brought a, you know, a small increase in the pricing that you would offer to your customer? Uh, I agree with me, Mr. Guo. Uh, the, uh, in any situation, the price will be related to the background of the customers. So mm. that's the, 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 the normal rule, I think. Okay, okay, <clears throat> I see. Uh, so uh, now another question that we uh, get to, I mean, a lot of people call, uh, you know, lawyers, um, bankers, and they're asking questions about, uh, you know, what's happening on the restructuring front. Uh, you know, do leasing companies get a lot of requests for restructuring? Uh, what kind of, of requests they are, they are getting? Uh, my, my first question on, on the topic, have you seen an increase uh, in, uh, you know, in terms of uh, requests uh, to, uh, you know, to provide deferrals on principal payments or any other kind of payment holidays? Or any other uh, types of uh, restructuring these these days, or do you expect that more will come in the future? And uh, Mr. Yan, I'm not sure whether 
you would have a lot of requests. No, no. So this country is not for me. <laughs> so we yes. are you come, I don't know. <laughs> yes. yes. So I, so I think the question is mostly addressed to Bill, I guess. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's a very tough question, and uh, you know, I will explain to you. And due to the, uh, you know, the legal agreement with our customers, we, we cannot disclose in much details. But it's good news, and uh, so far we don't have much uh, requests from our customers. Maybe, and uh, we have very, as I said, you know, in the, in the very beginning of stage, when we do business with customers, we already pick up, you know, the, the good credit customers, and uh, just you know, to avoid the situation like today. You know, you have to you know work out lots of our restructure requests, the restructure solution for the you know the customer which have the very not not strong cash flow and also not strong and the financial balance sheet to deal with this kind of situation. So no, I would say no, I, I wouldn't say zero, but I would say 99 percent of customers are still in good shape. We have to keep contact with them in a you know, daily daily basis. And you know, especially talking about the you know some kind of cash flow issue or so even for the hedge. Um, you know, maybe the hedge for the oil and the hedge for the, you know, the, the change rate for the dollar get their own currency. So we talk with them for all kinds of financial risk that they may be facing. And, you know, because as I said, you know, also explain the ICBC, not just for the business side, but also with the, you can offer the, you know, one uh, stop shopping solution for other kinds of potential risk. So, and, um, you know, we try to avoid, help our customers avoid any kind of potential risk. So, so uh, you know, in short, you know, right now everything, Worked fine from our side, you know, no big news and uh, no big surprise. So hopefully, in the in the coming month, we still keep this kind of situation. And however, you know, nobody knows, you know, for the next uh, few more quarters, if the situation lasts until maybe end of this year, maybe there will be some kind of requests from the farm customers. But current, currently, everything is okay. I hope, you know, the virus will be gone, so business could become normal, so we don't receive anything at all. So, Chris. Yeah. No, this is very. Uh, I mean, this is very enlightening. Uh, the other question that people ask, um, and I think we've discussed this in in the good times as well, because a number of people globally uh, were very, you know, cautious at the at the beginning with Chinese leasing because the, the difference between Chinese leasing and traditional bank finance is that you relinquish title. You give you the title of the vessel uh, to the leasing house. So. Uh, one of the questions that the ship owners uh, ask uh, often is how will the uh, Chinese leasing house uh, treat me if things go south? Would, would they treat me in a manner which would be similar to that applied by a traditional Western bank? Would they be more aggressive because they have the title of the vessel? Uh, so the question is, uh, would you see any difference between yourselves and the traditional lenders in, in the way you would treat a, a, a ship owner in a difficult market? Yes, uh, Chris, I think uh, I think we should we should be the same. You know, you know we use the same lawyer compared with the you know, traditional bank, the Western Valley. So and uh, you know we use the you know similar document, legal document. Of course, we have the the leasing template, and but it's it's very similar compared with the you know the traditional banks. So even the title had been transferred from the ship owner to you know to the leasing house, but I would say you know the the way we do business and with our customers is very similar, and uh, you know we we are we are a little flexible but not that much, and I can tell you, uh, especially we under the you know the own regulation requirement by our mother company XBC Bank, so we are we share the same I would say the culture and the same I would say the the risk management, so you know everything the same. Basically, compare with the uh, traditional banks. So mm -hmm. we just offer you the the pricing size or the structure size a little bit more flexible. But for the risk management, we keep the same same pace. Please. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Mr. Yang, any any comments from your side? Would you? Oh, okay, I just, okay. I just yeah. talk a, a little about the difference between traditional financial institutions and the leasing firms, uh, and I want to end it uh, that. Uh, uh, for the uh, uh, there, there are some uh, difference between the cost of uh, of banks and uh, the leasing companies. So uh, for the leasing companies, if they want to compete with uh, banks, uh, maybe we have to accept uh, uh, a higher leverage. Uh, but uh, uh, but how to comp compensate this uh, uh, this problem? Uh, we have to. Uh, if it's press 
uh, our uh, uh, professionals, especially in the uh, uh, price, it, uh, uh, the ship price, uh, judging the ship price and uh, the operation management. So uh, I think uh, we have some uh, advantages, but uh, we have uh, also have some disadvantages. So, so it's a balance between. Okay, thank you. Um, the last question from my end, and then I will, uh, you know, pass the microphone on to uh, Andrew. Uh, is you know, so I'm going to get the crystal ball, uh, you know, and and I want us to look at the future. And I just wanted to ask you whether the current crisis, uh, do you think that it will bring changes in the financing model? Uh, that the Chinese leasing houses are currently following. I mean, up until now, every year we saw increase of budgets, more up appetite for new deals. Uh, I mean, we, we, we discussed caution. Do you think that the product that you're selling is, is going to change because of the current market? Do you think that there will be less up, up appetite in the future? Uh, could it be the end of the road? Uh, you know, these are questions that I would like to address. Uh, I mean, initially to Mr. Young and then to uh, Bill. If uh, uh. Uh, for us, uh, uh, since we are a newcomer, so we have a lot of uh, to to learn now. So, uh, what we have uh, uh, the the product we have, what we have done uh, is uh, uh, from I, I think is uh, similar. Uh, from other uh, other other leasing uh, leasing firms. Uh, just for now, I think uh, the current product is enough. Uh, includes uh, uh, the uh, uh, buy, uh, 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 selling and the leasing back, and the direct leasing. Uh, so so it's enough for for us. Maybe uh, Bill can give you more uh, uh, more information. Yeah. Thanks, Yan and uh, Yan Zhong. And uh, I think because it's virus and uh, really changed the world, you know, people stay more time in the home and uh, you know spend more time with the family. So this 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 change, uh, it is it, it could not be gone in the short term. Maybe the change will be permanently change the structure uh, of the life and also the business model. Um, in my opinion, you know, especially for back to our shipping finance side, and um, you know, it might be change a lot of things. For example, and um, more and more China leasing house. Had put the efforts and timing and also money in the operation leasing, so which means and they become like the you know financial ship owners and uh, you know to put the new orders themselves to talk with the customers directly. Not, not of course not just cargo owners but also talk with the traditional ship owners as well. So and because if they couldn't find a new building and there also new financial leasing deals, they have to become ship owners to build new ships. And uh, I just got a figure from the West Value. Uh, maybe also Clarkson and they said about in the, in the first quarter, including maybe the the Apple, the net percent new building come from the China leasing house. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's sometimes good, but it's also very dangerous. And uh, you know, if a more new building only come from China leasing house because then the China leasing house had a much stronger, I would say the you know financial support or also the cash flow support. And uh, but these are also good for the business because then the the reason the shipping market is always up and down because of like this kind of situation, nobody order new ships. When the market become uh, the booming and uh, extremely good and everyone puts all the money to the new building. So the, they have say the supply and demand never ever be become, you know, really be equal or so be balanced. But with the China leasing house and also in general with the China leasing house. So the leasing house always can put new orders. Doesn't matter if the market is good or bad, would you, could help the market become a little more balanced because whenever you need the ships, the ship is already there. So the price will become more, a little more stable. So there's also consequence if we keep doing this way in terms of like, uh, you know, the speculation, absolutely new order might be gone because then the, the market is so bad and there's still some new ordering come from the leasing house. Um, but also, you know, the, the, obviously the cargo owners, they may like this way because then the, the, market, the price, shipping, shipping price, the freight price will not be like jump from uh, 300,000 US dollar to 3,000 US dollar. This kind of the big range change. The price could be a little more stable with a stable and a new building to supply to the market. Um, but uh, again, the ship market is still very big. You know, the China leasing house will not take over everything. And uh, but the change, I mean, the model 
would be, I would say, some new build, some new borders would be come out in the next few years, and so we don't really know how it look like. But we try to keep balance between financial leasing and also operation leasing. Um, first, and uh, we manage we manage our operation leasing maxi maximum to forty five percent, still majority percent, still to the financial leasing, which compared yeah. to the to the banks. So so we keep it two ways, you know, in the, in the balance in our own portfolio. Uh, so you, that's kind you, of a change. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you see do you, do you see more domestic projects uh, compared to international projects? Or um, no, I, I I don't I don't I don't think so because uh, if you talk about the mass project, which means that the MNB or the five star, and, uh, you know, this kind of project, we don't yeah. think too much because uh, we already have so much and uh, say to domestic ships. Uh, supply okay. to the market and the China already, you know, you know, not not like before, you know, too too digital and the growth anymore. So and uh, you know, the current ships for domestic ships are already enough for us to you know utilize, and uh, we still rely on the global market. So and uh, that's that's very important. Okay, okay. thank you, Mr. Yan. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Bill. I'll pass on the microphone to uh, Andrew, uh, in case he has questions from the floor. Thank you, Christophoros. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Mr. Yan, for that interesting discussion. So we have a few questions that have come in. Um, so the first question is directed to uh, Mr. Guo. The question is, um, Chinese leasing had great years after the financial crisis when many Western commercial banks pulled back and asset values fell. Do you think we are in a similar time now? And might this again be an opportunity for ICBC leasing? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think it's a good timing, you know, just because it's a very bad situation for everyone. So, and uh, I think it's a, it's timing for us to be, you know, to look back, you know, see what's re what we really need, you know, even for, you know, as, as I already explained, we don't really like, you know, this uh, speculation and uh, for the for the new ordering. Um, that's why the shipping markets has been up and down so often. If we keep on the, you know, we want to be in the make the shipping markets a bit the most smooth, and so we will try to keep the balance and also between the supply and the demand. And first, you know, we just take opportunity. You know, right now, the, you know, the new building price is below, and also still some kind of solid demand from our market. So we try to in the utilize the situation to put some money and into the new building to to win those new and uh, you know demand from the market. So. That's all what we are doing today. So we don't, we, we can't say it's a good opportunity for us to expand to the market. We try to and uh, keep keep doing something in this current bad situation. So that's our what we are doing right now. So Andrew. Okay, thank you very much for that. So another question for Mr. Yan is um, being mm -hmm. being a relatively new and small compared to other Chinese companies. Uh, do you think this is an advantage because you can choose a more tailor-made deal to suit your strategy? Uh, okay, <laughs> it's not easy to uh, to answer. Uh, so uh, uh, yes, we are a small and uh, a small uh, leasing firm, uh, uh, leasing firm, but it is com uh, compared to SBC leasing. Uh, in fact, uh, we have. Uh, uh, our company established in uh, 2012 and its mother uh, bank is uh, the Shanghai Pudong Development Bank. Uh, this is a, a very big bank. It is controlled by the uh, Shanghai government. So we have a strong background. Uh, uh, yes, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, with a newcomer of the, uh, the shipping business, but uh, and uh, uh, as a new camera, we, we can get uh, more information and uh, experience from uh, other uh, financial uh, leasing companies. Uh, in fact, uh, we are we, uh, uh, we are very uh, very good friends uh, with with, uh, with other uh, managers or, uh, like Bill and uh, Mr. Fang. Uh, Mr. Xu, uh, we we also meet uh, uh, privately, so they give me uh, they give us uh, uh, very uh, useful information. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, although we started lately, but we can we we, we have uh, a great uh, space in the future. Okay, 
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yan. So, um, a mm -hmm. few more questions. Um, in terms of financing requirements for leasing houses, are they still looking at financing from traditional banks or more from the bond market, as we have seen that they go to more and more? Perhaps Bill can take this question uh, first. Sure, sure. And we still work with the traditional banks, but no doubt, if you, if you ask about, you know, ask the question to that other traditional banks, we still, even right now, the current stage, we still have a few projects right now under discussion. The bond is just to help us to improve, improve our liquidity. Um, especially right now, the, the in general, US dollar become cheap, and the bond is good and the, the tool for us to increase our liquidity. But I would say for the, uh, the long-term and the financial pricing project, uh, we're still looking for the cooperation with the uh, trading banks, there's no doubt. Uh, now, the, the, ma the main channel for us uh, is from uh, other banks, uh, but we are uh, preparing for the uh, for, for, bond, uh, for bond issue now. Yeah, I mean, as, as Bill said, the most important uh, thing here is to potentially address this question to the Western banks, because are they willing to fund leasing projects these days? Uh, and and one would would assume that it is the safest best uh, you know the safest bet around because uh, you know Chinese uh, investment grade is 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 one of the best uh, but but they seem to be quieter these days uh, anyway okay thank you very much and um, a simple question what is the what is the minimum transaction size that either of your two leasing companies would consider. I think this this question has been asked so many times, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, I think different leasing houses are different uh, the standard. So for us, and uh, we still want to do the minimum deal like a uh, 50 million US dollars, five zero. Uh, what about you, Yan? Mr. Yan. Oh, okay. Uh, what is the minimum transaction that... size that you would consider? Oh, sorry. Can, can you repeat? <laughs> Not clearly. Okay. Mm -hmm. What what would be minimum. the minimum the minimum transaction size that your company would consider to finance? Uh, okay, uh, what we consider is uh, uh, the uh, is all the oh, okay. Uh, what we uh, we consider the most is uh, how to co cooperate with the top customers. Uh, we, uh, in fact, we have uh, no minimum uh, line now. Uh, as long as the project is good, we can cooperate. Okay, thank you very much. Now, one final question before we end um, regarding ESG, environmental social governance. Um, so, ESG is likely to continue to be a major issue affecting shipping finance from Western banks, perhaps even more than before. Does your institution have a policy for ESG factors and analysis? And perhaps, Christopher, so you can maybe comment on the Poseidon principles that Watson Farley was so instrumental in drafting. Yeah, Poseidon principles um, we, we've been discussing with the Chinese leasing houses. Uh, I don't think uh, at this juncture they are ready to adopt them, but, but they are considering. We have uh, provided, uh, you know, we, we, we have given presentations on the subject. Uh, but, you know, for Chinese lessors, uh, things are a bit different. Of course, they do need to consider uh, Poseidon principles, particularly when they are seeking, uh, you know, funds from traditional Western banks, because traditional Western banks now want to have the Poseidon principles in the documentation. So one would assume that the same language should be included in their uh, leasing documents as well. But But we haven't seen you know, a significant appetite from the Chinese leasing world to adopt these uh, principles uh, in, the, in the documents on a global basis. Thank you. Any, any comments? Yeah, you know, actually we're doing very close with the, with the Western banks, especially like a city and also you know, the European banks. We host the meeting last year and the twice, once, uh, once in Shanghai, once in Beijing. And to specifically discuss the you know the the Poseidon principle and how to utilize and the requirement into the Chinese banking system and regulation, because um, you know the Chinese bank and uh, you know 99% of the Chinese bank owned by the government uh, under the CDBC, you know the China Banking Regulation Committee. 
So, and uh, this kind of the principle, we have to be aligned with each other. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the document itself has been, you know, finished, which means we cannot change the wording, right? And it's 100 pages, it's taking a bit longer for our internal lawyers to read. And uh, so at the current stage, this document is still under review by our legal department. We are very positive for this and uh, for this and that uh, I would say the, the strategy or also the requirement because we also support the green and the, the strategy uh, in general. And that's why we put most of the projects into the MG and there are other I would say the green and um, you know the energy side. Uh, but you know so far we haven't got any conclusion yet in terms of the timeline. So when we go to sign, uh, especially right now the crisis and um, you know the virus has been impacted. So lots of things need to be possible. That's current stage. All right, thank you. So this is um, this is all we have time for today, unfortunately. Thank you very much, uh, Christophoros, Bill, and Mr. Yan, for yeah. participating. <clears throat> for those of you who are listening in, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our website later today or tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. We will also send a follow-up email tomorrow with some contact details. So if your question wasn't answered today, you can follow up with our speakers tomorrow. I know that there's a few questions that we didn't have time for. Uh, also, if you might be interested in uh, participating in uh, one of our future Marine Money webinars or becoming a Marine Money member, please visit our website or get in touch with the Marine Money team. Thank you very much all again for tuning in. This is your host, Andrew Oates from Marine Money, signing out. Thank you. Thank you, Yendo. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Hiro. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.